Thanks for checking out this show review video. So this is for the 2020 show release, uh, Lock and Key, and that's Lock with an E at the end of it. Uh, this is available on Netflix at the moment. It's actually a Netflix original. This is actually a show that's been bounced around a lot, uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit in my, you know, in my information on on the backstory of it. But um, it's a long time in the making. I'm glad it finally got made. I will say. There will be no spoilers for this review since it's very, very new. I would encourage people to actually watch it. So, But that said, you can watch all of this, and I won't be spoiling anything. So you can watch this, then watch the show, or you can watch the show and then watch this, or both, whatever. Do what you want. So let's talk about Lock and Key. Based on a comic book series by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez, Rodriguez, it's published by IDW Comics. Now, Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King. A lot of us know that. Uh, and Gabriel Rodriguez did the artwork for the comic book. I can highly re recommend the comic series. Uh, it does, it is different enough from the show that if you've seen the show, it is worth reading the comic and vice versa. They do diverge enough on things. They have a lot, I mean, a lot in common, obviously, because it's, you know, the show is based on the comic, but just know that they're different enough that I would recommend doing both of them. So I had read the comic a few years ago, and I knew about, you know, the show potentially coming out at that point. It was originally developed for Fox in 2010, but they watched the pilot, and then they didn't order any other episodes, so never actually aired. So back in 2010, this has been like 10 years in the making, basically. In 2014, at San Diego Comic-Con, it was announced that Universal Pictures would make a trilogy of movies based on it, which I think... Mm, I would have really loved that because because doing movie quality and th in three parts would be amazing. I think they could cover even a lot more, but I think Netflix did a good job with it, to be honest. In 2016, then, IDW announced that it was developing a TV series adaptation to go and shop around in networks and streaming services. And then in 2017, Hulu ordered a pilot for it. They then passed on the show that year. Then in 2018, Netflix made an order for the series after seeing the pilot of it. They, I think they actually remade it, did it, and yet a more updated pilot specifically for Netflix. Netflix said, we like it. We're going to order a whole season of it. Let's go. So it took from 2018 to 2020 for everything to get rolling, get done, and then be released. Um, just a, I mean, with, with these shows, you get multiple directors, but it's worth noting that Vincenzo Natali actually did two of the episodes for the show. There's 10 episodes total. Uh, and for people who don't remember, Vincenzo Natali has done such things as In the Tall Grass, Splice, and Cube, which I haven't seen In the Tall Grass. I've heard good things. Um, Splice, I quite liked, and Cube, I think is awesome. So yeah, I should review cube for the channel i will at some point so some key actors in this who i thought did a really good job i want to point out amelia jones plays the character of kinsey she does an awesome job she was in incident in a ghost land which i have a review for on this channel that is a really good movie it's available for streaming on shutter currently and i recommend that also jackson robert scott plays brody in this he does a really good job as a very young actor he was in the newer It, and he was also in the movie The Prodigy, which I've not seen The Prodigy, but I've heard good things about it, and he's a very good actor. So uh, so the town that this was in was originally changed from Lovecraft to Matheson to pay homage to the screenwriter Richard Mathis Matheson. Just, the, just an idea. Just letting people know. And the house was constructed at a studio in Toronto. So it's not a house that just existed. It was constructed. Uh, immediately, it's very different from the comics. Uh, the opening scene is not in the comics, uh, not at all in the comics. So they actually expand upon a bunch of stuff from the comic story uh, and change a few things. And sometimes it doesn't work so much, but other times it works really well. And so they also did some things in different order as well, and it, it comes... It comes down to the same thing. Sometimes it doesn't work as well, and sometimes it works really well. But it never hits a point where it doesn't work as well to where it's totally detrimental to the story and is bad. It's just different. And I, I look at, at the comic and say, well, I think the comic did it a little bit better. So still 
they did a good job. And there were actually some things that they decided to like change the order of or expand upon that I think is better than what the comic book did. So good stuff overall. They do a good job of slowly peeling back the layers of the family story. There's a big story about the family. It's all kind of centered, centered around the family. And they do a really good job of kind of very slowly, like I said, peeling the layers back, getting all the layers of what's going on within the family, the backstory on what's going on with everything. They don't just like throw it all at you at once. It's a very kind of slow thing and it, it's good. The mother in the comics is way more of a mess right off the bat, just so you know. They clean this up a bit to be a little bit more family-friendly. Friendly. It is darker in the comics. Not a ton darker, but it is darker in the comics than it is in the show. Uh, so it's more a, little, a bit more digestible for a younger audience, uh, the show is. But it's still, I don't know if I would show it to kids. It depends on who you are. I don't have kids, so I don't have to make that choice. But, you know, be your own judge. Overall, there's more levity and comedic moments versus the comics. There's a little bit of comedic stuff that they throw into the comics, but in the show, they put a lot more comedic stuff in it, and it's good. Like, it plays well. It doesn't feel forced or anything. The characters it, the characters they have doing comedic stuff, it feels very natural for them. So I, I appreciate that they incorporated it properly. I really like the fact that they have a group of kids in this called the Savini Squad, Obviously a nod to um, Tom Savini, uh, partially because of the name, but also because it's a nod to the horror community and how they like to analyze film, because that's what the squad does. They analyze films. They're all about film and stuff. And it's also awesome to note that Tom Savini makes a very small cameo in this show. Also, Joe Hill makes a very small cameo in it as well. So look out for those two in it. They move things a lot faster in the show. They've also had some different keys. Yeah, that's one of the big things. Every, things are very focused on keys with lock and key, and you would definitely know that if you just watch the trailer. It gives that away pretty much immediately. Also, the fact that it's called lock and key. Um, there are different keys that do different things, and it's, it's not the same comic versus show. They actually add some keys for the show. I think they... And, well, they... For the most part, they cover almost all the keys that are in the comics, but there are a few that they left out. Now, um, I don't know why those those choices would be. And in some, some cases, it's fine that they left certain ones out. And in other cases, I was kind of like, oh, I really wish they had, you know, done this one. But I, in some instances, I know because of, like, budgetary reasons, they would have had to do something really crazy. And, yeah, I don't blame them. I believe there's a reference to humanoids from the deep in this very early on. I think it's in the first or second episode. Uh, I forget specifically what they said because I took that note some time ago, but there was some sort of reference to humanoids from the deep. Uh, I think it was when they were doing shooting one of their films. How much it focuses on the kids is one of the strengths of the story. Um, yeah. I mean, it's very much from the perspective of the three kids in the Locke family and um, since it's from their perspective, I think it works very, very well. It's kind of a little bit of like a coming of age type deal, uh, dealing with family demons and drama and trauma. So yeah, it's a fun and interesting adventure because you really don't know where it's going next. Now, when I was watching it, obviously I knew for the most part where it was going, except for the things they decided to change because I had read the comics. But from the perspective of, you know, someone who hasn't read the comics first, like my wife watched it with me, and she, no clue. The whole time, she had no clue where it's going. And that's one of the strengths of the show, is that it's so original and interesting that you just don't know where it's going. You cannot predict these things. And even when there's some foreshadowing going on, it's not super strong. So, it's good. The character of Rufus is one of my favorites in the comic but they made him a little bit older in the show and they actually changed some stuff about him in the show. He's more interesting and has more impact in the comics than in the show, although he does still have impact in the show and he is still a good character in the show. I just liked him a lot more in the comics and it was a little bit of a letdown for me personally to you know, have a character that I liked that much that was kind of downplayed a little bit. Uh, they found some good ways to bring in flashbacks, which are much easier to incorporate in comics. It's way easier to just 
you know, have panels in comics and be like, you know, X number of years ago. And then, you know, because people expect that stuff in comics. It's a little harder to incorporate flashbacks in a natural way that doesn't feel like you're messing up the flow of the show for a show. But I think they did a really good job with that. So good on them. Um, one of the characters exhibits some emotions they're not supposed to. You'll know what I mean if you've seen it, and you'll know what I mean when you see it. Um, there's a situation where a character is not supposed to be exhibiting certain emotions, and that actually gets broken a few times, so it's a bit of a continuity issue. It's not a huge deal, it's not a deal breaker, but it is something I noticed that there wasn't that issue in the comic, but there was a bit of that issue in the show. But like I said, it's not a huge problem, it's just something I noticed. They added extra story for the character of Sam in the show, which actually I think works pretty well. In the comic book, the character of Sam doesn't have a whole lot of backstory to him. There's a little bit, but they expand upon it quite a bit, actually, and how he gets integrated into the story uh, in the show. They, they just make it a lot more rich, and I actually liked how they did that. It, it worked pretty well. Um, there's a lot more intertwining of the two evils in the show versus the comic. The comic, it's a little more separated than it is in the show. There, there's a lot more kind of this going on than there is this going on versus, you know, comic show. So you'll know what I mean when you see it or if you've already seen it. Well, if you've done both. Uh, there are some good, sweeter and emotional moments that were actually added to the show that I think really worked. Um, there are a lot of times where, yeah, it feels very emotional. There's some, you know, very sweet moments, which there's some of that in the comics, but I think they added a lot more of it into the show. And I think it plays better in the show versus the comics because actually seeing something and having music to it and everything and the acting versus just reading it on the page, it, it's different and it plays differently and it can have more impact when it's done show wise. Uh, they su succeed at making you feel for someone you don't want to, which speaks great. It, it speaks volumes about the actual storytelling and the screenwriting that went that went into it, and also the acting. The acting, by and large, is quite good in this show, uh, except the person who plays the mom, not that good, not that good. Everyone else, I think, did. Ooh, sorry, everyone else, I think, did a pretty good job. Um, so yeah, but they make you feel for one of the characters that you really don't want to, and that just means great writing. They change the order of revealing some things. In some instances, it's better. Some it's not. I actually talked about that. Uh, and they changed the ending a lot, to be honest. But it actually worked pretty well. So actually, for me, having watched the comics, there was stuff at the end that surprised me. Because it's not in the comics, and it's totally for the show. And um, I, at first, I was conflicted. I'm like, I don't know how to feel about this. But it was good. I actually liked it in the end. And that's nice when they make a change that you're actually okay with, coming into it already knowing the story. Uh, the music matches the scenes very, very well in the show, sometimes tense and other times fun and whimsical. They do a really good job matching, matching the music to the different situations for sure. Um, I like a lot of Joe Hill stuff. It's all about what trauma does to people and how people choose to deal with it, and more specifically, how people make destructive decisions to try to deal with trauma. Um, Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King. Stephen King showcases families a lot in his stuff and trauma and dealing with trauma and the trauma of families and dealing with all of that and family drama. And Joe Hill does a lot of the same in his works. Uh, Nosferatu, uh, the TV show, he did a lot of that. Um, Lock and Key obviously does it. And you know, Stephen King, he has the HBO show, The Outsider, which I have a review for on my channel. Same type of themes. These themes keep coming up again and again with Stephen King and Joe Hill. Um, but it works. It, it, it works in horror for sure. There's a point made about how making assumptions about your role in things and blaming yourself is most likely wrong and you're just punishing yourself. That's another thing. The, you bring stuff out of this story. There are lessons to be learned. There are morals to the story, morals to the tale, and... It resonates, like it can. It's, I'm not saying it's going to resonate with everyone, but it can resonate with some people. And for me, you know, it kind of did, and it plays well. That really helps with the story and helping people connect with it and really love it. So that's actually all I have to say about the show. So now I need to do my rating. Um, out of five stars with half stars in play, it's quite good. It's not perfection, but it's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and give it a four... 
Hmm. I'm gonna give it four out of five stars. I was between four and four and a half. If I was doing quarters, I'd do 4.25, but I'm gonna give it a four star rating, which is a great rating because I'm not super easy on, you know, giving these ratings out, but there you go. Uh, go ahead and put some comments down there. Have you already seen the show? What are your thoughts on it? Are you going to watch it? You know, whatever you think. Also, your feelings on Joe Hill's work, you know, if you've read any of his books or anything. Also, hit that subscribe for me real quick if you could. Literally takes you a second and is totally painless. That's your way to repay me for doing any of these videos. If you like anything I do, uh, if you've already subscribed, uh, also make sure you've already hit the notification bell so you know when things are going up, especially for when I'm doing live streams. And you can also hit the thumbs up if you're already subscribed and want to be like, hey, I'm still watching and I appreciate it. But put some comments down there. That's the most important thing. Let's talk horror. Thank you very much for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.